Hi there. This talk is about a combinatorial approach to quantum random function. I am Si Hong, and it's co-worked by Nico Jotelin and Julio Malavota. Here is a brief overview of this talk. I'm going to start with the background of pseudo-random functions and the motivation of our work. Next, I will use an example to explain the challenge we encountered. Then, I will show you our results and detailed construction step by step. At the end, I finish this talk with a short summary. So basically, a pseudo-random function, or PRF, is a similar random function, which means for a distinguisher running in polynomial time, it looks the same as a truly random function on the black box axis. In other words, this pseudo random function and the truly random function are indistinguishable for the efficient adversary. PRF um, has, a, has a lot of applications such as message authentication codes and the symmetric encryption schemes. Uh, it's a fundamental building block in modern crypto assumptions. What about the PRF analogs in quantum world? In general, there are two definitions. First one is post-quantum PRF, or some authors call it standard secure PRF for quantum adversary, which means even the adversary can do quantum computation locally, but it can only send classical queries to its oracle. The other definition, or the second definition, is quantum secure PRF, QPRF which means the adversary or distinguisher can query via superpositions. Here, superposition simply means you can query linear combinations of, of all, all your possible inputs. Now let's see what a QPRF can be used for. For instance, it can be used to build quantum money. So quantum money is backed by the cloning theorem. Thus, it's impossible to forge. This is intrinsically ideal for backnodes. Also, it, um, QPRF can also be used to build pseudo-random quantum states and quantum secure max. In this work, we focus on quantum secure PRF. Before us, Landry investigated this stuff heavily, especially in Fox 2012 and Crypto 2012. He gave an outstanding separation result, which shows that if secure PRFs exist, then there are post-quantum PRFs that are not QPRFs. Apart from this separation result, Landry also proved that many constructions of post-quantum PRF are also quantum secure. But he, he used completely different analysis for each one. Those proofs are complicated and not tight. This motivated us to think if there is a generic construction for QPRF with simple analysis and optimally tight proof. Our inspiration is from domain extension techniques. However, the challenge came as follows. It's, it's, it's not trivial to extend the domain even for the truly random function. Here, we use a concrete example to show this challenge. Suppose we have a truly random function, f, mapping between two lambda-based strings. We would like to extend it by using a random linear function, or universal hash function h, in this way. We compute, we compute f' prime as f of h of x. This is statistically indistinguishable from a truly random function for a classical adversary with oracle access. However, uh, Bernay and Limton in BNL 95 suggested that one can find the period of a function efficiently via superposition queries. In this case, one can find the kernel of our linear function H, thus makes it, uh, make, make this function f prime distinguishable. Anyway, uh, let me first show our results in this work. 
we explored a different road to construct QPRF based on the framework of George Lee and Schroeder in crypto 2015 and have the following result. Given any post quantum PRF with small domain, our construction can extend it to the full fledged QPRF. The key ingredient is a highly unbalanced bipartite expander, uh, which I will explain this bipartite expander later. This crucially allows us to reduce the quantum hardness of our PRF to the classical hardness of a small domain PRF. So this makes our uh, our analysis or our proof almost totally classical. Here's another result. Our construction preserves the key homomorphic property of the underlying PRF. Thus, we can give a quantum key homomorphic PRF for free. Key, homo key homomorphic PRF were introduced by Bernay at all. So uh, in, in a nutshell, for, for key homomorphic PRF, the K space is a group and it holds for all x such that PRF K1 plus K2x equals to PRF K1x plus PRF of K2x. K homomorphic PRFs have applications in, in the context of proxy re-encryption and related key security. It gives it give it gives rise to, to the very natural protocol for, for a distributed PRF. Here's an outline of our construction. There are two steps. The first step is domain extension step. In this part, we take a small domain post-quantum PRF to, to build a Q-bounded quantum PRF on a large domain. Here, Q-bounded means um, if a PRF is Q-bounded, uh, its, secur its security is only guaranteed for what the worst race which can make Q queries at most. The second step is called combiner step, which combines a small number of bounded quantum PRFs which have the same domain. Let's start with the second step, the combiner step. The key idea here is to set the bounds in an exponentially increasing way. Specifically, if fqx is a q-bounded PRF, we combine them into a function fx by uh, adding all of them together from, from f2 to 1 to f2 to t. Here t will be chosen slightly super logarithmic in the security parameter lambda. We claim that if fqx is a q-bounded q-PRF as long as q is polynomial, then fx is an unbounded QPRF. The security derives from the following fact. For an efficient BQP distinguisher, there is an upper bound Q prime on the number of superposition queries it can make. Here, uh, upper bound Q prime, which can only be polynomially large. And thus, we are able to choose I prime uh, equals to log of Q prime to reduce the security of f to the i prime's bounded PRF up to, to, up to, to i prime. Now let's go to go back to the first step, the domain extension step. As mentioned, domain extension is somewhat challenging, and we also showed statistical secure against classical diversity in this step is not sufficient. So we need a perfectly secure domain extension step. If so, we can use Zandrius lemma in Fox 2012, which states that uh, any classical 2Q uniform function is ideally is, is identically distributed to a uniform function from the view of a Q bounded quantum adversary. This directly gives us a Q bounded quantum PRF. Here's a high-level description of our construction. From a, from a post-quantum PRF, the small domain will let it pass through the extender and the combiner to get the final quantum PRF. Um, and in the extender part, 
this is the most important part. We know that a perfectly secure domain extension can be achieved from a highly unbalanced expander. So what's uh, what's a unbalanced expander? So as you can see from this figure, um, a bipartite expander is a bipartite graph whose left vertices can be super poly super polynomially large, where uh, its right vertices are just polynomially large. And also its degree is poly polylogarithmic. Moreover, we require an additional property for this um, unbalanced bipartite expander. We call it Q unique. Basically, it means that for any subset of lab vertices with size not, not larger than Q, than some bond Q, um, there exists a vertex in the neighborhood of uh, this subset connected, connected to only one vertex in in this subset, or in other words, uh, this this vertex only has one neighbor. So um, a construction of such a Q unique expander is given in GUV zero nine. Now we have all the tools prepared. Let's start with extending a random function to Q uniform function first. So here, Q uniform means um, for any pairwise distinct x1 from x1 to xq, the g, g of x1 to g of xq are independent and uniformly random. With, with, with this Q unique expander for, for a random function defined on the small domain, we can extend it to Q uniform function g defined on the large domain by adding all of these terms together. So what, why does it work? Well, the Q-unique property of this expander for any subset, there exists a, a vertex V prime having a unique neighbor Xi prime. Thus, there's an index J prime such that, such as uh, this term, uh, f of gamma of Xi prime J prime only appear only appears once, only appears in the G Xi prime, but no other G Xi. Given this term is uniformly random and independent of other GXI, the GXI prime is also uniformly random and independent of other GXI terms. Therefore, we can recursively repeat to show every GXI is uniformly random and independent. Then we, re we replace the truly we replace this truly random function with a small domain PRF and choose q equals to 2q. We claim that if this small domain PRF is post-quantum, then it holds that fx is indistinguishable from the 2q uniform function gx for any q bond the bqp dist uh, distinguisher. Finally, by using Zandrus lemma, we are done. We will, we will, we will make, we will get a q bond the q PRF. We only need to show that f and gx are indistinguishable. Suppose suppose there's a q bounded bqp adversary a can distinguish between f and gx. We will show that another a prime another adversary a prime can break the post quantum security on the of the underlying pair f. Let the adversary a prime classically query the oracle. And to to build uh, its function table because this um, because the underlying function is is defined on a small domain. So the adversary a prime can do this uh, efficiently. Then uh, a prime locally compute a quantum circuit corresponding to this uh, function table. Now we let a prime give adversary a superposition access to its simulated oracle O prime. And outputs. What uh what is the adversary A outputs? Clearly, if A can distinguish F and G X, then A prime can also distinguish P R F from a truly random function. Uh, with a, with the same advantage.
Okay, to make a summary, uh, we, we, we showed a generic and a simple construction in this work, which does not need to go through GGM construction. And our analysis is almost classical with an optimally tight proof. That's all. Thanks for watching this video.